Welcome or welcome back to Learning is the New Working, brought to you by me, Chris Peary, of the Learning Futures Group. And to this episode, which is another in our series called Learning for Good. If you're a regular listener, then you'll know that in this season, we're doing something a little bit different. We're exploring the workplace learning practices of the $200 billion international aid and development industry. We think there's a lot that corporate learning professionals and learning leaders can learn from this sector where capacity building is a key ingredient, whether it's the incredible rate of tech adoption in the global south or the need to operate at global scale, the critical importance of localization, and the agility and innovation born out of necessity and tight resources. Today's guest is Tina Bolding from DisasterReady.org. DisasterReady is an online learning platform built to better provide and prepare humanitarian and development workers for the critical work they do providing high-quality, relevant, and online learning resources at no cost in English, Spanish, Arabic, and French. Disaster Ready is the non-profit initiative of the Cornerstone On Demand Foundation, with support from representatives of NGO agencies and private sector, including USAID, United Nations, UNICEF, UNHCR, and a host of other public and private sector sponsors. Tina has led the organization for four years. Prior to that, she spent time as Chief Human Resource Officer at an organization called Food for the Hungry, And prior to that, she was a partner at Accenture for 16 years. She's a graduate of the University of Tulsa, where she now lives and operates. Her areas of expertise are strategic HR leadership, change management, organization development, leadership development, and business management consulting. Let's listen in to my conversation with Disaster Ready's Tina Bolding. Tina, welcome to Learning is the New Working. Thank you, Chris. It's really, really nice to be here. Great. Well, let's get going with our uh, typical rapid fire uh, s- section to figure out who you are and what you do. Um, can you start, Tina, by telling us, um, and this one's going to be fun, what part of the world you live in and you work in and why? Well, I live in America, which is, uh, and I'm in the state of Oklahoma, and it was where I was born and raised. Excellent. And, uh, you know, you and I have a little bit of Tulsa in common, we um, do. which we talked about before. It's very, very fun. Always great to talk to somebody in Oklahoma. What's your job title, Tina? And what kind of work do you do on a typical day? My job title is director of DisasterReady.org. And on a typical day, I work with humanitarian organizations and agencies, really of all sizes around the world, to discuss ways we can partner to increase capacity development of the humanitarian and development sector. And as a part of that, um, I also curate, I evaluate and maintain content in our library, and I plan promotions to communicate to our learners about new content that's in our library that they can use to build their skills. Hmm. And what, what is the mission of Disaster Ready? Mm. The mission of Disaster Ready is to increase the effectiveness of humanitarian and development professionals around the world. And what, how do you, what services, you know, what, what, what makes up the offerings of the Disaster Ready uh, platform? Well, Disaster Ready offers a library of over a thousand online learning resources. And those resources include things like self-paced courses, instructional videos, we have guides, certifications, and even continuing professional development programs. And they are on topics that range from technical sectors like water and sanitation, shelter, that sort of thing, to safety and security, and even soft skills training, um, such as communication, negotiation, those sorts of things. And we bundle the content in our portal in a way that makes it easy for learners to find what they need. Um, Disaster Ready is available as an open online portal for both individuals to register on their own. It's all free. Or for organizations looking to provide training to their employees as part of our technology grant program. Got it. And and so what do you know, Tina, about your typical students? Are they working for multinational NGOs? Are they in the U.S.? Uh, are they at point of need? What, what do you know about the people who come to your uh, site for training? Well, about 50% of them are either new to the humanitarian and development sector or they're very early in their career. 
and the remaining are experienced aid and development workers. And they really come from organizations, mostly international NGOs, then uh, national NGOs and United Nations agencies. And there's a big mix. There is a large group of people that come from the United States, but we actually have 160,000 learners from over 190 countries makes up our learner base. Interesting. What, what can you tell us about the business model? And pr perhaps it might be good for you to explain here a little bit about how Disaster Ready fits into the Cornerstone on Demand Foundation and, and, and its relationship to the, the parent company. Sure. Well, the for-profit company is called Cornerstone On Demand, and they make cloud-based talent management software for organizations really across all industries, and it's used to recruit, train, and manage people across the organization. So think things like recruiting, onboarding, learning, performance, that sort of a thing. And our CEO, Adam Miller, started the company back in 1999 with the tagline, Educating the World. He really had a vision for leveraging technology and online learning so that people had the opportunity to learn no matter where they were located. And because of his passion for social impact in 2010, he launched the nonprofit arm of the company, which is called Cornerstone On Demand Foundation. And, and Disaster Ready is one of the services of that foundation? Yes, so the foundation, uh, really our mission there is to transform them the way people help people. And we have three primary offerings. One is our technology grants. Um, the second is pro bono consulting. And the third is our open online learning portals, of which uh, DisasterReady.org is one of those portals that focuses on providing free resources to humanitarians. We also have nonprofit ready.org which does the same thing for nonprofit professionals and our newest portal is called workforceready.org and that's targeted at students or recent graduates to build foundation skills required to be successful in the workplace in the workplace interesting yeah. interesting um, and how many what sort of resources do you have um, in disaster ready to to do your work well we operate the whole foundation operates on a shared service model so there are 13 members of the foundation total. I'm the one dedicated resource to Disaster Ready, but as a team, uh, we all provide service to the different programs and services that we provide. You know, one of the, for our series, which I think you and I discussed before, we're looking at all aspects of the international aid um, and um, support industry. And one of the sort of new trends, one of the aspects that's changing that industry is public partners, public private partnerships and uh, private companies feeling an increasing sense of responsibility to do social good as well as just be um, profitable, uh, successful companies. Um, so I'm really interested in your relationship between um, the company and the work that you do. And we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit. But I thought uh, it might be good if you could give me some examples of, of where your organization uh, has had impact uh, that you feel particularly good about and that would be illustrative of the kind of work that you do? Sure. Well, two examples come to my mind. The first one is the creation of DisasterReady.org. And I love the story behind how Disaster Ready came to be because it was a result of the Pakistan flood. I'm not sure if you remember or not, but late in 2010, there was floods in Pakistan that impacted over 20 million people. It was a significant uh, humanitarian aid initiative, and it left many families homeless with food and shelter in short supply. And soon after that, we got a call from Save the Children. They were one of our foundation's first technology grantees who used our software, for example, to, to train their staff. And they had countless children impacted in Pakistan and save the children needed to train thousands of aid workers to respond to the crisis as quickly as possible. But they wanted to do that before people got on the ground in Pakistan and they couldn't fly everybody to, to one location. So in just a few days, we were able to launch an online portal that allowed save the children workers to train before they were deployed. And it was a result of that experience that the Cornerstone Foundation 
started looking around and saying, well, what do other humanitarian organizations do to train their staff? And lo and behold, of course, we learned that there were humanitarians around the world that had that same challenge. They really needed access to high quality, readily available online learning and Disaster Ready was born. So we're certainly we're certainly proud of that. Uh, we, we started Disaster Ready seven years ago and there's been from that point, you know, t- about 250,000 aid and development professionals that utilize our portal to build their skills as of today. And we didn't do that alone. Uh, we collaborated with the sector and it's our mission, that's our sole focus as a foundation. So, and based on that success, it led to the expansion of our other open online portals like Nonprofit Ready and Workforce Ready. So that's that's the first example. Do I have time to give a second example? You certainly do, that's a great example. <laughs> keep, keep them coming, we'd okay, like to hear the okay. stories. Okay, so the second example is a partnership that we have with Mercy Corps and the International Rescue Committee. Those are two very reputable, very large international NGO organizations. And we've been partnering with them uh, to develop an online learning program targeted at humanitarian aid workers inside Syria and the surrounding countries. Mm -hmm. So this particular program was funded by the U.S. Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance, and it began about four years ago. My colleague and I went to Jordan. We conducted a learning needs assessment to glean information that would help us design what has become a very robust program that successfully provided training courses that are all in Arabic and English, It's impacted 19,000 learners in Syria, Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon, and Turkey who have registered for 87,000 courses and they've completed 26,000. So I know I just threw out a lot of numbers Mm. to you, but we're really pleased with the success of this program because in Syria, as you can imagine, there was a lot of difficulty in people attending face-to-face training. They couldn't, it wasn't safe to all come together for face-to-face training, nor did they have approval to cross a border, like to go mm-hmm. into Turkey and to take training. So this was this was really significant, particularly for uh, many of the new local humanitarian aid organizations, local NGOs, right, that just sprung up out of the dire necessity to have people on the ground. And so um, the, the work that we've been doing in Syria in conjunction with Mercy Corps, the IRC, um, and OFTA was really what drove Disaster Ready to to invest in building and curating what's become the largest library of Arabic content for humanitarian workers. So again, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but it's just important to remember that all this training is for free. So it's it's our whole goal is to try and minimize barriers to accessibility, barriers that occur because of affordability and then well, language re- really interesting examples and stories and there's a number of things um, in there that are really interesting to to me and i think to our audience as well one is the scale that, that this sector operates at um, big numbers lots of people uh and uh, second is the speed you know in, in a disaster contact context or a humanitarian crisis context it's all about sort of moving quickly Third is the collaboration. I mean, this this sector is just amazing to me uh, how collaboration happens, and uh, it's a network of organisations that kind of solve problems. And this also, and then 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 last but not least, the sort of content model. And I want to sort of dig into that next a little bit, if I can. Um, how do you get content built? Where's the expertise, and what are the challenges around localization and local relevancy of of content? for your platform. Can you give us a, a sense of how you build, curate, uh, and what are the kind of topics that people are most interested in? Certainly, absolutely. So, uh, and, and, and this is a prime example of collaboration um, at its finest. I'm just meaning we, we couldn't do it alone. The Cornerstone Foundation, we are experts in online learning design development and technology, but we don't go into the field and provide aid, right? So uh, so we're not experts in the development and implementation of 
humanitarian aid programs or development programs. So we rely then on the sector through things like we have an advisory 